The human population. We are finally here to some very controversial topics. The human population size, affluence, resource consumption, they all are interrelated and they all impact the environment. Probably one of the best examples that most of my students know is China. China is striking with more than 1.3 billion people. That's almost 20% of all humans live in China. In addition to looking at um, data per, per millions, per billions, um, we can look at, uh, it's useful to look at it and examine it through a foot for, through a footprint of an entire country. We usually do this by multiplying the per capita ecological footprint um, of a country by the number of people who live there. So we find that the United States has a footprint of uh, 2,810 million hectares. That's about 7,000 million acres. Um, China's footprint is 2,700 million hectares. It's about 6.8 million acres. Um, and then Western Africa is at 18, a um, little over 18 million hectares, and so that's about 46 million acres. Um, so look at, looking at this another way, the United States, um, with only one-fourth of the population of China, has an, a footprint, um, ecological footprint, that's comparable to China because of its high levels of consumption. But China, however, China's rapid development and um, it's described as like the beginning, is beginning its new chapter, uh, means that this ecological footprint that China has is about to continue to um, grow here uh, in the upcoming years very rapidly. And so what contributes to a lot of this? I mean, we feel like we do everything we can to save the environment. And so um, Ms. Hoskins' theory of material possessions, not in your textbook, uh, not anywhere, um, just FYI. Here we have a series of photos that are um, family based. So you can see the entire family has taken all the stuff that's within their home and pulled it all out and is, has it all on display. So these are the things that this particular family possesses. And um, if you look at different countries like <coughs> uh, uh, Kenya, um, this is Ethiopia, um, this is uh, South America, I want to say it's like coast of Ecuador or something like that, this is Indonesia. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine family members and all their stuff fits in a boat. Um, and then here of course we have a, a small suburban um, family, I mean uh, they're smaller than my family, the four of them. Um, and here we have lots of stuff, pianos, beds, you know. So obviously these guys right here are people. They're using a lot of resources. I mean, it took a lot of wood, metal, material, um, energy. There's lots and lots of lamps. These guys don't even have a lamp uh, to, to build all this stuff. Um, but, you know, even in South America where <clears throat> um, people who are living off the grid... Uh, still require lots and lots of stuff. Um, I mean, this is just this is just a couple, uh, but they're still feeding dogs because you know if you want to live a hunter gatherer life, I guess you're gonna need some dogs there too. Um, and this sustainable um, energy uh, still requires lots of material, um, and this all uses energy, right? Gas, propane, um, propane stoves and things. And I got a TV out there in a yurt. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so anyway, you get the idea that a lot of this uh, family style, cultural play a role in, um, in environmental impact and resource depletion. So to estimate the impact that humans have on the earth, environmental scientists have derived what we call an IPAT equation. And this equation um, is used to estimate the impact of human lifestyle on the environment. So we say impact equals the population times its affluence times its technology. So the total environmental impact is 7.7 .7 billion people. It's hard to appreciate um, to it's hard to appreciate the equation um, when some people consume like large amounts of things and some people consume like basically like negative amounts of things. Um, but, you know, although it's written like it's a mathematical equation, the iPad equation is basically a conceptual representation. It's these three major factors that influence environmental 
impact. A country's affluence is often corresponded with its um, level of impact. And uh, its affluence is <clears throat> gauges the country's wealth and its potential to impact the environment. So environmental scientists often turn use the most uh, common measure of a nation's wealth, which we call the GDP, or gross domestic product. And that is the value of all products and services in one year for one country. And GDP is made up of four types of economic activities. Um, they're consumer spending, investments, government spending, and um, exports minus imports. And so this GDP often correlates with the population levels, uh, very low levels per GDP. Um, industrial activity is too low to produce much pollution at all. And high levels, um, that means that there is high you know, fossil fuel burning. Um, and so many countries develop this pattern that is relative to its GDP. As GDP increases, a nation begins to be able to afford um, to burn more fossil fuels, especially coal, um, which although it's relatively like inexpensive when you think about it, it emits a substantial amount of pollution. So the country may also rely on um, rudimentary efficiency equipment that emits a huge amount of pollution as it starts its um, development.